The third pillar of the Norbertine charism is Spiritus Iudis Penitentiae, or literally a continual spirit of penance or a spirit of habitual penance. This is an aspect which we have in common with all religious and indeed with all the people of God, but it's something that all religious, including monastics, have. So we canons regular must have it too. We mustn't think that because uh, we are canons, we have a lighter load of penance and penance than any others. And St Norbert, of course, was extremely austere in his penance. Spiritus Iudis Penitentiae, a spirit of habitual penance. The word Iudis also reminds us of the Latin yugum, meaning a yoke, a burden. And a yoke in this sense is rather like the oxen pulling the plough who are yoked together. One can't go faster than the other, otherwise the ploughing would really be in a mess. So to be yoked to Christ is to follow his path of suffering and the cross. We mustn't ever think that we've done enough in this life to make up for our faults and our failings. After all, we are sinners and we always fall short of the glory of God. We need to ask forgiveness for our own sins and have a real hatred for sin in order to grow in virtue and be forgiven and then forgive others. Our Lord says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, my burden light. It is indeed so that our hearts might be a little bit broken and humbled and therefore made more gentle and more loving that our Lord asks us to accept habitual penance and a life of the yoke or the burden of austerity. But don't worry, it's not a torturous process. It involves little things. It involves putting up with little things, with little pains, with great love. It involves certainly an amount of fasting, an amount of self-sacrificing love. But also it involves having a sense of forgiveness for others, knowing how much we are in need of forgiveness. Simply living together can be a bit of a penance. Our Holy Father Norbert, in fact, inflicted so much penance and fasting on his companions that one of them died early on. We don't uh, quite enforce that regime anymore, but certainly there are penitential aspects to community life. However, the way of perfection is about being ready to correct and be corrected in the right spirit. And that means we need to have great humility and humble our pride and get rid of our ridiculous affectations and things that get in the way of our relationship with God and with each other. We have to have a spirit of reparation. Our Holy Father Norbert did not leave us many words uh, but he did leave us a few sayings and indeed a sermon which uh, he left when he uh, left Cremontre to become Archbishop of Magdeburg. And these are his words. He says to his brothers in the order, Having of your own free will and from pure love of God renounced your earthly possessions and even your own selves, you are daily obliged to carry the cross of Christ. That is, you are obliged to continually mortify your passions and to spend your whole life in works of penance. Yes, he was an exacting founder. He did set us a high standard, but that's because he himself was further along, perhaps, the way of perfection than we are. And so it looks difficult, but he also had a word of encouragement. He said, those who understand how to appreciate penance Find therein an abundance of delight. A life of austerities bears a rich crop of happiness, but no one believes this unless he has given it a trial. This is absolutely true. No one believes it unless he's given it a go. You realise that there are many fruits uh, that are there from the little penances we might attempt. Perhaps in Lent or in the other penitential seasons or days of the church's year, you offer up little penances to God. That's the spirit of habitual penance, which St Norbert asks of his sons and daughters in the order. 
the real saint of the order to pray to for this spirit, for this third pillar of our normative life, is uh, a saint of the order, well, a blessed, blessed James Kern, Jakob Kern, who was a priest of Geras in Austria. And he gave his life and his priesthood, including a painful uh, wound that he endured, in atonement for a priest who had left the priesthood and indeed become a schismatic. He offered his life in reparation for someone else. It can help us to embrace the little sacrifices that our Lord asks of us if we offer them for others as well as for our own sins. We must never think we've done enough to make up for our own sins, but also what could be more generous or loving than to offer a sacrifice pleasing to God on behalf of others who may have offended him, some of whom may not even be aware that they have offended him. If this sounds like a challenge you're willing to take up, then be in touch with us and let us know your thoughts. A spirit of habitual penance does not mean that you go around whipping yourself all day. Uh, it certainly does not mean that. It doesn't mean that your mortification should become the most important thing you do. But it does mean that amid the great blessings that we enjoy in this life, including the good things of this world, which can be used for God's glory, we often can make sacrifices of love for love of God and as a, an offering of repentance and contrition for our sins. Let us pray. Almighty Father, raise up abundant and holy vocations to the order of Prémontré. Send us good and holy souls who will keep the faith alive and guard the blessed memory of our Holy Fathers, Augustine and Norbert. Grant us holy ministers of your altar, who will be careful and fervent guardians of the Eucharist, lifting high the Blessed Sacrament above all the errors and miseries of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.